Well, hello. Hello, hello. Welcome to this English lesson. This is the uh the first time I almost didn't start on time. I sat down and I thought I had 10 minutes left and then I looked and it said that I was starting in one minute on the screen. So, anyways, hello and welcome. Uh we'll get started for real in about 27 seconds once I test everything to make sure it is working. Sounds like everything's working. Yes, five, four, three, two, one. Well, hello and welcome to this English lesson about gigantic things. I'm a little bit gigantic in the frame. Let me zoom out a little bit. Um, today, we're going to learn about gigantic things. In the world around us, there are things of different shapes and sizes. Some things are small. Some things are tiny. I did a lesson about tiny things a couple of weeks ago. Uh some things are normal size but some things are big. Some things are huge and some things are gigantic or enormous and that's kind of the order I use those words in. I usually say that something is big. If it's bigger than that, I might say it's huge. And if it's bigger than that, I might say it's gigantic or enormous. I don't think there's any specific rules about when to use huge, gigantic or enormous. So, that's just my personal order of how I describe very, very, very big things. So, once again, welcome to this lesson about gigantic things. I have a lot of gigantic things to talk about in this lesson. Before we get started, let me just double check everything. It's one of those mornings where I'm in a really good mood. I'm very energetic but I'm not very um uh I can't even remember the word. I'm I'm forgetting things. So, let me just double check to make sure things are working. Let me just adjust my camera slightly here. There we go. So, yeah, when I started, I was gigantic because I was zoomed way in. That's a little it's a little too big. <laughs> For for my comfort level. I don't like my face that big on the screen. So, there we go. Everything sounds like it's working. Everything's doing well. Um so, yes, let me say good morning to a few people. Good morning to Lolly Lolly Key Park. Um I need my reading glasses to see the chat. Good morning to Sham, Z, Douglas, John, Hussein, S.A., Nabil, Pin, Morning Sunshine, Vitor, Caitlin, Madi, Riza, Denny, Lydia, Sally, Freddie Wolf says, hi, Dave, the Canadian. Hope you are good. Hey, I didn't have a chance this morning to say hi to people in the chat. So, I'll just have to say hi to everyone and that hopefully covers all of you. Normally, I take some time to chat with people before the lesson starts. Uh, this morning, I was um occupied. I was doing a few other things and didn't sit down in time to do that but I'm here now. Everything seems to be working and uh we should probably get this lesson started. Do remember um to have good English conversations um in the chat while you are watching. Um at some point, I was going to ask Dave if he's able to make polls. I'm not sure if Dave is. Um let's see. Start a and a No, I don't wanna do that. I want to start a poll. Hi. Hello. How are you? This isn't a real poll. This is just me being silly right now but um I'm gonna throw a poll up there and see if Dave's able to control it. If he can't, then I will figure out during the week how to uh give Dave another job to do while he's moderating the chat. Anyways, let's see here. I've clicked the right buttons. Everything seems to be working. We'll do a focus check. Everyone can see my hand for a moment. I do realize though I don't have on my watch or my wedding ring. So, I'm gonna put my watch on for a sec. You know, it's kind of one of those I don't know if you guys have this but like in order to feel prepared for something, I have to have my watch and wedding ring on or my Fitbit. It's actually a fitness tracker. So, uh anyways, I'm sure everyone's had a chance to answer my silly poll and we'll end that poll and I will start the lesson. So, here we go. Most people said hello. Some people said how are you? 
I am fine by the way and hello to you as well. Planets. Planets are gigantic. When you think about things that we know and things that we can see, there are planets in our solar system and a lot of those planets are gigantic. You might say a planet like Pluto. I know some people say Pluto isn't a planet but when I was in school, we learned that Pluto was a a planet. Pluto is relatively small when it comes to planets but Jupiter and Saturn are gigantic. They are enormous planets. Remember again, this lesson is about gigantic things but I'm going to use the word enormous a lot too. Jupiter is a gigantic planet. Certainly much bigger than Earth. But if you think about it, compared to humans, every planet in the universe is gigantic in my opinion. Uh people are not very big when it, when you co- start comparing us to other things. And do remember, even though some of the words in this English lesson might seem simple and they might be words you know, listen to the other words I use as well. I just used the term solar system. I said Jupiter, Saturn, Pluto. Um so, do remember that even though I'm talking about just one word that you might know, there might be a few other words you can learn along the way. Just gonna go to the screen for a sec. Dave says, it looks like I can close the poll but I don't think I can create new polls. The YouTube doc says the button is supposed to be at the bottom of the chat window but I don't see any buttons there. Yeah, there's a plus button for me, Dave. That's what I see. I click the plus button and I can ask a question or start a poll. Okay, here we go. Back to the lesson. Moons. So, earth has one moon. Obviously, the moon is smaller than the earth but it's still gigantic in my opinion. Some planets have multiple moons. I believe Jupiter has a number of moons. I don't know how many but moons as well are big. They're gigantic. If we wanted to live on the moon, the moon is big enough that we could go to the moon and we could Um we could build a moon base. We could actually build a place on the moon where we could live. So far, we've visited the moon. So far, we have space stations that orbit the earth that people live on but as yet, no one has really gone to live on the moon long term. Maybe that will happen in my lifetime. We'll see. And then stars, if you didn't know this, the sun is actually a star. Uh stars are quite big. The sun is enormous. The sun is gigantic uh and it's also very very hot. Whales. When you start to talk about animals, we have animals like a whale. A whale I think is I think the blue whale might be the largest animal on earth and the elephant might be the largest land animal. So, we kind of distinguish between animals that live in the ocean and animals that live on land. So, the whale or a number of different whales kinds of whales are some of the biggest if not the biggest animals on the planet. If you were in a boat and if a whale jumped out of the water, you would definitely use the word gigantic. You would say, oh, that was a gigantic whale and when that whale jumped out of the water and landed, um there was a gigantic splash of water as well. But yes, definitely whales are enormous sea creatures and elephants are definitely enormous land animals or animals that live on land. Towers. So, here is the Eiffel Tower. Towers are these things humans build because we want to see how tall we can make something and how beautiful we can make it look. So, around the world, there are different towers. In Toronto, there's something called the CN Tower. So, if I drive about an hour and a half from here, I can see the CN Tower. The CN Tower is quite tall and it's I would say it's gigantic. Every year, um I think just once a year, there's a race. You can use the stairs to go to the top and some people walk to the top of the CN Tower. That would be a gigantic You would use a gigantic amount of energy to climb that gigantic tower. But towers, humans uh for a very long time have had this crazy desire to build incredibly gigantic towers, incredibly tall towers. So, again, I'm using tall and gigantic. 
So, you'll see that gigantic can be used to mean something really big but I can also use it to talk about something that's really tall. You could say, "Well, that tower is gigantic." So, it has a couple of slightly different meanings there. And then oceans. So, around the planet, we live on a planet where there there's a lot of water and oceans are huge bodies of water. Remember how I said the vocabulary might be simple but I'm going to use other words as I describe it. So, an ocean is considered a body of water. Oceans are huge. There's the Atlantic Ocean, the Pacific Ocean, the Arctic Ocean, um the Indian Ocean. I'm trying to think of all these different oceans that they are that there are but the ocean is so gigantic that for a long time people did not regularly cross the oceans in boats. Um it wasn't until fairly recently in the last few hundred years that people regularly and safely started to cross the ocean in ocean going vessels. Okay, there's another term for you. An ocean going vessel is a boat that is able to cross the ocean. So, oceans definitely, definitely huge. Definitely gigantic. Mountains. So, in Canada where I live, there aren't any mountains. In western Canada, we have the Rocky Mountains and they are gigantic. I have seen the Rocky Mountains a few times in my life. In fact, my brother-in-law and sister-in-law used to live out west and so when we visited them, we would see the Rocky Mountains and they are gigantic. They they are they're so big, they're so tall that my brother-in-law and I went skiing. We went downhill skiing in July one year. We went to a local mountain to hike and we realized the ski slopes at the top were open. So, we came back the next day and we skied all day. It was a super super fun day. But hey, let's look at some questions here. Let me pop some questions on the screen. Let me see here. Um where am I? From Renata. Great question. Hello, Bob. Oh, the question doesn't quite fit. Let me see if I can fix that. No, no, I'm just gonna mess stuff up. I think I have to hold this key down. There we go. Renata says, hello, Bob. I hope you're doing tremendously well today. Do Canadians use the words ginormous, a combination of gigantic and enormous and humongous? Thank you. Have a great day. Yes. So, ginormous is a word that I first heard about 20 years ago and it's it's kind of a made up word. Like, if something is gigantic or enormous and then there's something else even bigger you might say it's ginormous and then humongous is a normal fairly normal word um, that you can use as well. Great question though. Uh let's see here from Unsel. Hi, Unsel. Hello, teacher Bob. Is there any structure that you would like to see in particular from the gigantic structures in the world? Have a great day. Yeah, I would like to see the Eiffel Tower. I know comparatively it's not nearly as tall as some of the structures in the world. Um I know we've built a lot of taller uh things since then but I would like to visit the Eiffel Tower. That would be that would be a lot of fun. I'm fascinated by the structure by how it was built with interlocking um uh metal or iron. Let's see here. Amran. Hi, Bob. Couple of months I didn't watch your video. Welcome back then. Today, I just got a chance to watch it. Actually, how many seasons in Canada? So, Canada, most parts of Canada have four distinct seasons and I'll make this part of the lesson by saying we have gigantic snowstorms sometimes in the winter. Um some parts of Canada are a little bit more mild like out west in British Columbia but usually we have a distinct winter, a spring, summer and fall. Um and I know there are some parts of the world where it's you know there's a hot season and a rainy season. We definitely have four distinct seasons. From Natalia. Hello, Bob. If you could choose only one skill, what would you prefer? A gigantic intelligence but a poor heart or a gigantic heart but a poor intelligence? Thank you. Well, that's not a fair question. (laughs) That's hard to say. I always prefer a balance. I like people like when you say gigantic heart, In English, that would mean that you are kind and generous. When you say a gigantic intellect, it means that you are extremely intelligent. I would like a little bit of both. That's what I would that's what I would like to have. 
Dimitri, hi, Mr. Bob. Have you seen those viral videos when people can experiment with the solar system like add beetle geist instead of the sun or cover Mars with water? Fascinating. I think I said beetle geist properly. Let me look that up for a sec. Pronounce. I'm not familiar. I know it's very tall. Pronunciation of beetle. There is an alternate pre. Let's see. Oh, that's the British pronunciation. Hmm, it says Beetlejuice. Is that actually how you say it? I'm not a professional astronomer. So, I'm not always aware of how to say things. I may have m- mispronounced that earlier. So, sorry about that. Um but no, I haven't uh Dimitri played with uh that simulation software. That would be really cool to learn how to do that. Let's see here. From Hafiez. Looking laid back with the blue shirt. Yeah, it's a little shiny for me. I don't usually wear shiny shirts but they were on sale. Two for twelve ninety nine, and I needed some more shirts. So, I bought them. Contrary to, oh sorry. L- looking laid back with the blue shirt. Contrary to blue though, latest on the monstrous Canada fire scorch and whopping 27 million, a- million acres. Astronomical amount. 20 times the size of my country. Yes. The wildfires in Canada have been bad this year. They are, it's gigantic. The amount of land that has burned or forest that has burned is gigantic for sure. So, and we still, last week even, there was another smoke alert day in my area even though I live really far from the fires. From Stacy, hello, teacher Bob. How are you? What is the most gigantic animal or building you've ever seen? Thank you for the live lesson. It is very useful and fun. So, I've seen killer whales. Those are pretty big whales. I live close to marine land. A place where you used to be able to go and see a lot of different um, animals. Uh, And then, an elephant. I think elephant would be, an elephant would be the biggest. When I was in South Africa, I saw elephants at Kruger Park. That was a fun trip. Okay, we're gonna jump right back to the lesson and keep moving along here. Thank you for those questions. I'm at the end of the question list. Let me have a sip of water. Then, American English with this guy says or speak English with this guy. That's the way you say it. Beetlejuice. I guess like the movie. I never knew that. I did watch the movie Beetlejuice but I didn't know and I'm not gonna say it three times in a row but yes, thank you Brent for that. Um let's see here. Um I'm gonna yeah, how do I say this? I I wanna like do a little teaser. I'll just say this. Brent and I have chatted. That's all I'll say. Something exciting might happen but Brent and I have been chatting a lot for the last week on WhatsApp. So, I'll let you try and figure out what that means. That's the first teaser for something that might be happening in the future. Who knows? Um let me get back to the lesson here. Bridges. So, there are bodies of water that sometimes people can't cross and so, we build bridges. When we started building bridges hundreds of years ago, they were pretty tiny. Maybe a small footbridge. Maybe just a small suspension bridge that people could walk across but eventually, we built cars and we needed a way to get cars across bridges and trains. So, we built trestle bridges. We built suspension bridges. We built all kinds of bridges to cross usually water but sometimes just a valley or ravine um but bridges have become gigantic. There's actually a bridge in eastern Canada that goes all the way from the coastline to this island of Prince Edward Island. So, this enormous enormous bridge. I forget the name of it. Uh, Bridge to PEI. The Confederation Bridge. 12.9 kilometers long. The longest bridge in the world over ice covered water. So, there you go. This is not the Confederation Bridge by the way. Um but yes, bridges. Some of them are gigantic. Cargo planes. So, one of the biggest planes in the world I believe is a cargo plane. I'm not 100% sure. In order to bring lots of things from one country to another or to move them within a country, we will often use cargo planes. A cargo plane plane is different than a passenger plane. A cargo plane is usually used just for things. Maybe it's filled with cars. Maybe it's filled with military equipment. Maybe the cargo plane is filled with 
a whole bunch of iPads coming uh to my country to be sold to Canadians but cargo planes are full of cargo. So, again, cargo is anything that needs to be shipped. So, interesting thing here. We use the verb to ship to talk about whenever we send stuff. So, if I bought a t-shirt online, they would ship it to me. We even use the word when talking about cargo planes. So, you would say my t-shirt is uh my t-shirt was shipped. They shipped it via cargo plane. So, it didn't go on an actual ship. It went on a plane but we use the verb ship to talk that way. Passenger planes, we are all familiar with these. A passenger plane can be gigantic. Some are small. I mean, they're all big but some are relatively small but some are gigantic. A Boeing 757 is huge. Uh, An Airbus, I wanna say 380. What's the biggest Airbus? Biggest Airbus. Airbus A380 is a gigantic plane. Um so, definitely we have really learned how to make planes well as a civilization. Container ships. So, there are a number of different kinds of ships. There are a lot of cruise ships in the world but there are also a lot of container ships. So, a container ship has a lot of containers on it. All of these things on this ship are called containers. It is how we ship the vast majority of products on this planet. So, there are container ships continually moving around the world. When a container ship got stuck in the Suez Canal, it canal, it affected the whole world because we all rely on container ships to get certain things. If I want to buy a car that's made in Japan, we can buy Japanese cars in Canada. It comes on a container ship. If for some reason that ship can't make it across the ocean, it really affects the world's economy. So, container ships and cruise ships. So, a cruise ship is more for fun and for enjoyment. I have never been on a cruise ship. I'm not sure I ever will go on a cruise ship. We'll see. Um but a cruise ship, what's a good way to describe this? Like a floating hotel? That might be a good way to describe it. A cruise ship is a gigantic ship filled with people who are sailing from port to port in order to visit different countries. It's very popular for Canadians to go on cruise ships that leave from Florida in the United States and go through the Caribbean or the Caribbean. There's two words to say it and visit all the different islands. So, a lot of Canadians will in the winter drive or fly to Florida the state of Florida in the southern US and then take a cruise ship on a cruise through the Caribbean or the Caribbean. It's the same place by the way. I just say it two different ways. Hot air balloons. Now, these aren't necessarily gigantic but when you see one up close, it seems gigantic. It's really fun to see a gigantic hot air balloon up close unless you are my One of Jen's friends also grows flowers and a hot air balloon uh made an emergency landing in her flower field and mushed or crushed a lot of her flowers a few years ago. Um so, then seeing a hot air balloon up close wouldn't be exciting if it was damaging your um yeah, dam- if it was damaging your uh your flowers that you were growing. So, here we go. Let me just try one thing for a sec. I wanted to do more of this. I haven't figured it out yet. Start a poll. Um question. Have you ever been on a hot air air balloon? Yes or no? Ask. There we go. Machines or machinery? So, we kind of use these two words interchangeably. A farm has a lot of machinery. They have tractors and they have wagons and they have what's called a combine to harvest things. You could also call it a harvester, a combine harvester. Um machines and machinery. Again, we use the two words interchangeably like the farmer bought a lot of machines or the farmer bought a lot of machinery. Have you seen a newer tractor. Have you seen how gigantic tractors have become? Here's a funny story. I have 
a tractor that I thought was a big tractor but it's actually now considered to be a medium sized tractor because tractors have become so um enormous and gigantic over the last 20 years that uh people no longer consider my tractor uh to be um a very big tractor. So, let me end the poll there and we'll see. Have you ever been on a hot air balloon? No, says 85%. Yes, 14%. Very cool. That is very cool. I have not. I'm a little bit afraid of heights. I'm not sure I would go on a hot air balloon ride. We'll see. People. So, this is an interesting usage case. We don't often use the word gigantic unless we're talking about extremely big men with lots of muscle, okay? So, here's when I hear the word gigantic. If you're watching the Olympics and you're watching the men's weightlifting, you might say that guy is gigantic. We don't often use the word gigantic to talk about women. I'm not sure why. But if you're watching the heaviest weight class in a boxing match, you might say a men's boxing match. You might say, oh, um the the fighter from Belgium, he's gigantic. What you mean then is that that person has a lot of muscle. You're also saying they're probably quite tall but if you see someone like this, I think this is an actor. I think he was in Game of Thrones. I'm not sure um but you would say not to the person. You wouldn't walk up and say, you're gigantic but you might say to a friend, did you see that guy? He's gigantic meaning that he's has a lot of muscle, very physically fit um and uh huge. Yeah, you would use that word as well. So, this one's a little gross. So, look away if you don't want to look. Sometimes on our faces, we get things that we call zits or pimples. We use the word zit a lot in Canadian English and high schoolers often get these or teenagers but sometimes I'll get a zit too. Um it's not uncommon for me to do an English lesson and there's like a small red spot somewhere on my face. We call this a zit and even though a zit is actually tiny, when you get a zit, often people will say, ah, it's picture day at school and I have a gigantic zit on my forehead or I'm going on a date and I just realized I have a gigantic zit on my face. So, even though the zit is actually small, we use the word gigantic to describe it. I'm gonna make this picture smaller because it's grossing me out a bit. We make we use the word gigantic because of how it makes us feel. It makes us feel a little bit embarrassed. So, there we go. Um so, just for fun, Um can you put the word in your language, put the word for zit in the chat. I wanna see some of those words. That'd be fun. Mistakes. Sometimes you make a gigantic mistake. Sometimes you make an enormous mistake or a huge mistake. One might be that you accidentally drove your car in the ditch because you turned the wrong way or something. You made a gigantic mistake. Um a gigantic mistake that I recently saw someone do is they forgot what day their exam was. Um a student came to school a day later and their exam was actually the day before. So, that would be a gigantic mistake. That would definitely be a gigantic mistake for sure. Icebergs. If you have ever been on a ship in the North Atlantic, you would most likely have seen icebergs. I have never seen an iceberg in real life. It is a mystery to me what they actually look like up close. So, notice again, I'm using the phrase up close. When you see something up close, it means that you're close to it. Um sometimes if you see a person in the distance, you don't recognize them until you get up close and then you can see who they are. So, I've never seen an iceberg in real life. I've only seen pictures and I've never seen um an iceberg up close. That would be fun someday to do that. Let me look here in the chat. There's a whole bunch of people posting words. I don't know why I'm curious about this but let me see. So, we have patanas acne. Oh, terme scientifique acne and then bouton. Bouton en français, les boutons. Yes. 
I think in the Petit Nicolas story, they talk about Bouton. I forget which one though. Anyways, back to the lesson for a bit and then we'll do members only chat in a moment. Trees. So, hopefully, I say this one right. In western, in the western United States, there are trees called sequoia and they are the biggest trees in the world, I think. They are gigantic. If you look here, these people are standing in front of one and I would dare say this isn't even the biggest tree in the world but trees can be gigantic. In Canada, we have gigantic trees. We have gigantic maple trees in some places. Close to me, there's one of the oldest maple trees in Ontario, my province. Um and you can't you can't put your arms around it. Like I think you need four or five people to join hands to put your to put your arms around the whole tree. So, trees definitely are things that can be gigantic. Okay, let's do members only chat. If you don't know what members only chat is, I will be answering questions directly from members for the next little while for about 10 minutes. So, if you are a member, first of all, thank you. Uh if you are not a member, there is a join button below that you can click at some point to find out more about what membership is. But let's uh let's do some questions from the form and at the same time, I'll do questions from members. So, let me get the next question on the screen. Sue says, hello, teacher Bob. How are you doing today? What is the most gigantic thing out of all the items you own in your house? Well, that's interesting. There is a gigantic light right here. <laughs> like, it's I can't even show you. I should how do I show you my light? I don't know. I was gonna take a picture of the light and then show you the picture. Let me see if I can do that. That's probably not the guess. It I don't even know if this will focus but that's my light. It's a gigantic light. Um is that the biggest thing in my house? Everything else we have I think is just normal size. Like, we have a normal size oven. Um we have a normal size stove. Um some people will have a gigantic sink in their in their laundry room. We just have a a normal size sink. So, nothing out of the ordinary. Um let's see here. From I have an exam tomorrow. Interesting. Hi, Bob. Are you a marine? I hope it's tomorrow and not in not not today. (laughs) That would be a gigantic mistake. Hi, Bob. Are you a marine life enthusiast? Those deep sea creatures are gigantic, aren't they? I love them. I would say I'm not an enthusiast but I am in favor of taking care of the earth, taking care of plants and animals as best as we can. So, an enthusiast would be someone who loves bird watching or loves whale watching, loves renting a boat to go out in the ocean to watch these creatures. I'm more of a person who likes to make sure we live in a way that takes care of the planet. That's what I would say. Okay, from the chat. Uh uh let's see. New words with MP has gifted a membership. Thank you for doing that and the membership was given to Peter. So, Peter, congratulations. You were given a membership. Lolly Lolly says gigantic lesson. Thanks, Bob. No problem. John Wedge says hello, Bob and friends here. No question today. Listen and have fun in the chat. You're a gigantic person for all of us, Bob. So, I'm not gonna say this is me but sometimes we will say that someone has a gigantic heart. Like, oh, she has a gigantic heart. She's always volunteering at the um homeless shelter or something. So, let's see here. Key Park, the most gigantic tree can make a car go through it. Yeah, they have some sequoias where they cut holes so cars could drive through it. Fabian, hi, teacher Bob. Greetings from Columbia. Do you know what types of things are gigantic in Colombia? I wanna tell you bank debts. Haha, <laughs> it's a joke. Yes, though, that's a good thing to mention because you can use the word gigantic to talk about money. You can borrow a gigantic amount of money from the bank. You can owe a gigantic amount of money to your brother. Um you definitely, you can um spend a gigantic amount of money on a car. So, great, great I understand it was a joke but it's a great addition to the lesson. Freddie Wolf. Bob, are there expressions that exist when things are so super huge, enormous, gigantic things that the human mind can't even imagine the possibility that it could exist? For instance, black holes. We use the phrase, it's hard to imagine 
or we use the phrase, I can't picture that in my mind. Those are two very common phrases. Like when someone says, um, I went to a concert and there were a hundred thousand people. I can't imagine that many people. I can't picture that in my mind. So, that would be the phrase we would use. Stacy, I saw elephants in the zoo yesterday but they were not that gigantic. Yeah, sometimes there's little elephants. They're still big but um from Sita. Hi, Sita. Good to see you. Hello, Mr. Bomb. I've been busy every Friday. I feel sorry for not being able to be with you during your live stream. Live lessons. It's no problem. Life happens and we are all busy at different times. So, but we've missed you, Sita. Nice to see you. Uh let's see here. Um Eugene from Etobicoke Automation Secure Home says, I have a gigantic double door refrigerator in my ki- oh, double door refrigerator in my kitchen. Yes. I have a I have a pretty big fridge. When our fridge stopped working a long time ago, we bought as big a fridge as we could because we have five kids, right? We bought as big a fridge as we could. It's big but not gigantic. It only has one door. Uh Eugene's fridge has two doors. It's a gigantic double door fridge. Cool. Mode says, hello, Mr. Bob. I'm sorry I'm late today. You kind of look younger than normal today if you allow me to say that and I'm really not saying it for the occasion if you know what I mean. Well, thank you very much, Mode. Yes, we have no control over the direction age goes but what we do have control over is this. You can get a good night's sleep. You can eat a healthy breakfast. You can go for a walk. And you can do your best to be healthy and I think that makes you have a more youthful appearance. That's the that's a great English phrase by the way. He has a youthful uh, appearance. Let's see here. By the way, I at market yesterday, I met one of my viewers and they said I looked very thin and healthy. So, it was a very nice compliment. Anyways, Mo, thank you so much for your message earlier this week as well. That was much appreciated. Mo also says, I guess it's I guess because it's summer and you're well rested. That is true. It is just a better time for me. Stacy, I often make small mistakes but I have not made gigantic mistakes such as getting confused about dates of important exams. Yeah, that is a gigantic mistake. Some mistakes you can't fix. Uh Brent says hi to Sita. Uh Daquan says hi, Bob. Good to see you again. You too. Thanks for being here. John Wedge. Oh, thanks, Bob. That's what I mean. You have a gigantic heart for all of us. Hey, folks, don't forget to give a thumbs up. Thanks, John, for that compliment. Almaran says, welcome back, Brent. I think you were inside the refrigerator having some food. Possibly. Sometimes I get stuck looking in the fridge for too long. When I was a kid, my parents would yell at me if I held the door of the fridge open for too long and now as an adult, I do it myself sometimes. Uh let's see here. Pin says, you are an amazing teacher, Bob and I love everyone here. Thank you so much for those kind words. Um new words with MP says, which one is gigantic electric appliances? So, when it comes to appliances like fridges, stoves, uh ovens, the ones we would describe as gigantic would be these. If a fridge has two doors and is really tall, you might say it's a gigantic fridge. If a oven Some people have an oven with two doors and they can cook two things at once. They can cook smaller things like pizzas at the bottom. Um not sure why my 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 here just a sec. I'm getting a text. I doubt it's important but let's see here. That's not an important text. There's an election coming up and politicians have the ability to send messages. So, I just got a a voicemail and then I got a text saying that from a a politician. That's how politicians work. Um what was I talking about? Can't remember. I was talking about let's see here. Oh, you're an amazing teacher. Thank you. And then from Peter, I'm really glad. Thank you so much, Mr. Bob gave me member chat. Well, I didn't give it to you. New words with MP gifted you a chat. So, if you look Peter right above your name, there's a big green box. You should thank that person and I thank them as well. Wanda says, hi, teacher Bob. Here in Brazil, there is a city with many giant objects like telephones and so on. Is there a city like this in Canada? Thanks. So, we're gonna get to what we call roadside attractions or tourist attractions in a bit. So, I'll explain it a bit more then. Mode says, what comes to mind when you hear the word tanker? 
Is it that gigantic ship with, for transporting oil? Yes. Or a truck that transports liquids. What do you call that kind of truck anyway? Yeah, we call that a tanker too. Um so, I think with a truck when like when it's a long cylinder. So, you have a transport truck and the trailer part is a cylinder. We would call that a tanker. We might call it yeah. I might just call it a fuel truck though because usually tankers in this area have gasoline on them. But yes, definitely tanker and then also for the ship. Yeah. So, a tanker could um sink in the ocean or you could have a tanker truck bring liquids. I think we add truck to it. He drives a tanker truck. Yeah, I think we say truck with it. John Wedge. Hey, Eugene. I'm so sorry about what happened in Etobicoke on Saturday night. I am not familiar with that but I will find out later. Fernando. Hi, Bob and members. Thank you for your great classes. You are a professional teacher. I enjoy the time listening to you. Thanks, Fernando. Well, thank you for hanging out and learning a bit as well. Mode says, Sita, good to see you here. Help yourself to some Brigadiros from Modinho. I should check into that as well. Uh let's see here. Caitlin says, hi, Bob, Mr. Bob. Thank you for teaching us. No problem. From Colombia. Saludos. And then Brent or uh, sorry, Eugene says, Seven break and enters reported in Etobicoke last week. That is not that is not nice at all. Okay, let me turn off members chat and we will work on getting this lesson done. We have a few more slides to go. Thank you to everyone in the chat. Or thank you to everyone who is a member and thank you for participating in members only chat. That is awesome. Um let's see here. Let's get back to the slides. Let me have a sip of water. And we will talk about a few more things. Storms. Last night, we actually had a really bad storm here. As I was driving home last night, the storm was so bad, the rain was so intense that I had to drive 40 kilometers an hour and it was also starting to get dark and the person in front of me didn't have any lights on their trailer or on the back of their vehicle. Their brake lights were broken. So, I was in a really bad rainstorm and it was gigantic. Um I drove for half an hour and I was still in the storm. So, it was (laughs) well, it normally would have been a half hour but it took me longer. But we do have gigantic storms. It seems that the last couple of summers, we've had more and more gigantic storms. If you remember on my farm last summer, we had a gigantic storm and my willow tree broke and a big branch was hanging in the background of my videos for a month or two until I finally cleaned it up. But yes, we definitely have it seems like more and more gigantic storms in the summers here. Buildings. So, I'm not sure this is a competition. But we certainly have been building some gigantic buildings in the world in the last 10, 20 or 30 years. Sometimes you will see a building and you'll say that's a really tall building but sometimes it's just gigantic. Like a gigantic building would be just way taller than any other building in that city. So, certainly I know on the edge of Central Park in New York, there's a really gigantic apartment building right now that's either being built or almost finished. So, I do not own a mansion but some mansions are gigantic. Are all mansions gigantic? Possibly. A mansion is an enormous house. A mansion is a gigantic house that a multi-millionaire or a billionaire would own. The reason I use the word multi-millionaire is because these days if you're a millionaire, Um you're not going to buy a mansion. You'll probably just have a nice house. You might have a big house but if you are a multimillionaire, that means you have more than a million dollars. You have 20 million or 30 million or 50 million dollars. You might buy a mansion. Certainly, if you are a billionaire, you will most likely own a mansion. So, again, a mansion is just a really, really, really big house. A gigantic house. Farms. So, in the United States and in Canada, most farms are now gigantic. Here's a term for you. Many years ago, there were a lot of family farms. 
A family farm is a small farm, maybe 100 acres, maybe 200 acres. I know that might seem big to you but um when I was a kid, almost all of my friends lived on a farm. There were a lot of family farms. So, the parents and the kids um had cows or pigs or chickens and the farm was just big enough for a family to do all the work. Now, a lot of farms are gigantic. They are actually called agribusinesses. They are enormous farms, thousands of acres and there's more than just a family working there. Sometimes, a gigantic farm will be three or four families like a brother and two sisters and all of their kids will run a farm. So, maybe um so, the the one gigantic farm I know um one brother and his wife have four kids. The other sister and her husband have three kids. The other sister and her husband have two kids and they all run a gigantic farm Uh, and some are just businesses. They're just owned and run by um by a by a boss who hires lots of employees. Signs and billboards. So, this is the Hollywood sign. Apparently, it's I'm I'm not sure I'm allowed to show this but I found a royalty free picture. So, I will. Um the Hollywood sign is gigantic. I think if you were up close, the letters are way bigger than you are as a person um but a sign and then the signs you see along a highway are called billboards. So, this is a billboard and some billboards are definitely gigantic. Um I see more billboards when I'm in Michigan than I do in Canada. I'm not sure if we have stricter laws in Canada about billboards. But when I'm in Michigan, there are a lot of billboards along the highway. Not as many in Canada for some reason. So, there's something called a roadside attraction or a tourist attraction and different cities in the world have decided to build extra big things as tourist attractions. So, this is called an Adirondack chair. This is what we call this type of chair. Normally, it's human size. But this one is extra big. Um so, some places have decided to build a really big pencil. There's a place in Canada where they mine nickel and so, they have a gigantic sorry, this isn't a nickel but this is some money. Um they have a gigantic nickel uh in Sudbury, Ontario. So, a tourist attraction or a roadside attraction uh these are sometimes gigantic. They decide to build something gigantic. Uh, for people to look at and for people to see. So, spiders and bugs are actually quite small but we use the word gigantic when we see one that's extra scary and bigger than you would expect or bigger than normal. So, um just last night, we were selling bouquets of flowers and there was a spider in one and the girl said, there's a gigantic spider in there and I laughed which wasn't nice but I laughed because I knew I was going to talk about gigantic spiders today. People who are afraid of spiders when they see a big spider will often say, ah, there's a gigantic spider. Um don't go in that room. There's a gigantic spider and sometimes when we are sitting around a campfire, mosquitoes will bite us and sometimes there will be a really big mosquito and we'll say, oh, that's a gigantic mosquito. Malls. So, I believe this is the Mall of America. There's also in Canada something called the West Edmonton Mall in Edmonton. I think it's still called that. I'll have to check. Malls can be gigantic. When I go to the city close to me, the mall there is big. It's a big mall but it's not enormous. It's not gigantic. There is a mall though in Toronto and I can't remember the name and it's gigantic. You could literally if you track your steps, you could get your 10,000 steps just by shopping in that mall because the mall is gigantic. So, again, a mall is a shopping mall. It's a collection of stores. Um usually indoors like 99% of the time, a mall is something where you are indoors. We do have outdoor malls in this part of Canada though. There's one in Niagara Falls but a mall uh depending on where you are could be described as gigantic. Stadiums and auditoriums. So, if you go watch soccer or what most of you call football, you probably go to a gigantic stadium. 
Um, I think soccer stadiums are the biggest stadiums in the world. Um, they're definitely bigger than a hockey arena um or a basketball arena. Um football stadiums though in America might also be I think maybe the biggest stadium in the world is in Texas. Everything is gigantic in Texas. That's a little bit of a joke. If you're from Texas, I'm not trying to insult you uh but uh I should ask Brett about this someday but for some reason the state of Texas in the US um in North America we always imagine everything in Texas is gigantic. Stadiums are gigantic and etc. I don't know where that came from but that's a common thing. Auditoriums. So, an auditorium is where you would go in order to hear a concert. Maybe you're going to maybe you bought you've bought tickets to the opera. Uh you would go to an auditorium. That would be the place that you would go in order to um in order to hear that concert or to uh see the thing you bought tickets for. Lenses. So, um I was at a sports event, a high school sports event and there was a photographer there and the lens on his camera was even bigger than this one. And so, sometimes when you have a camera, I can't show you because my camera is right there. Uh when you have a camera, it has a little lens on it or a big lens on it but sometimes it will have an enormous lens or a gigantic lens. Usually, these lenses are used for sporting events or for taking pictures of wildlife. If you were a wildlife photographer, you probably have a gigantic lens because you want to be able to take pictures of the wild animals from far away especially if they're dangerous. The same is true for um sports photographers. You want you can't be on the field to take a good picture. You need to be far away um so that you don't disturb the game. So, you most likely will have a gigantic lens. And then, I'm going to end with this slide. The universe. So, all around us, there are planets. There are stars. Um there are galaxies. All of those things are gigantic but the universe is the word we use to talk about everything that exists. So, the universe is the most gigantic thing in the world. There's nothing bigger than the universe because everything is part of the universe. That's it for the formal part of the lesson. Let me have a sip of water and finish off the question. Questions? So, I see Abdi saying, where's Brent? So, when I say Brent, I mean speak English with this guy. He's uh, often in the chat helping out, answering questions, chatting. Omran says, I would love to be a wild wildlife photographer. So, wildlife. So, we use the word wildlife to talk about animals that do not live on farms. Okay, let me get to the question. Next question. Um Sale says, hello, Bob. Happy to have you here. A crazy idea that will be in Saudi Arabia. The city of Neom, 500 meters high, 170 kilometers long and only 200 meters wide without cars. I've heard about this and saw some like um um you know, artists rendition of what it might, might look like. Um very interesting. Very, very that's gigantic. That will be a gigantic building. Uh, if they build it and if it is completed. Uh let's see. From Apple's my name. Hi. Apple the frog. Hi, Bob. How's your day going? Love your shirt today. Thank you. Question. Would you like to go on a cruise ship with your family? I hope I will have the chance to do so one day. So, I'm not sure. I'm a little bit claustrophobic. So, when you're claustrophobic, you don't like small spaces, okay? So, when I go in an elevator, If it's a normal size elevator, no problem but a few times I've been in an elevator where there's only enough room for one or two people like a really small old elevator and then I I feel very anxious. I'm claustrophobic and I think I would feel that way on a cruise ship. The cabins are very, very small. Ivan, hello, Bob. Do you have VR in your house? No, I have a computer that's capable of it but I do not have a VR headset to start playing with it. Um someday maybe. Maybe someday I'll do the lessons in VR when the technology is good enough. Um 
Leo, hi Bob. Is it right to use the word gigantic about small things when they are really bigger in comparison to the others of the same species? Thanks. Yes. So, a good example would be like a really tall muscular human who is abnormally tall and muscular. We would say that person is gigantic. If there are you know we have a an insect here called a cricket and sometimes most crickets are about this big but sometimes you see one that's this big and you would then say oh it's a gigantic cricket. So, even though like bugs in particular insects are quite small we do use gigantic when we are comparing them. From Noboro, I have recently reread a book Jack and the Beanstalk. I was scared to read the book when I was a boy. Have you met giants living in the sky? How big were they? Ah, I should have put the word giant in here. Yes. So, in the story Jack and the Beanstalk, Jack climbs his gigantic beanstalk up to the sky and he meets a giant which a giant would be a gigantic human being. So, have I met giants in the sky? No, I have not met giants in the sky. Uh William says, I don't have a question for you but have a beautiful day. You too. Um from Fabian, hello teacher. Hello again teacher. I like to tell you that I would love to live on a farm like you. We use on. Could you tell us how many hectares is your farm? So, I live on just over 60 acres. Um 60 acres in hectares. So, I know it's like divide 2.5 or something. 24 hectares. So, my farm is about probably 25 and a bit in terms of hectares. So, that's how big the farm is. It's not gigantic. It's I know that sounds like a lot of land but most of the farms around me are hundreds of acres. You know, 600, 700, 800 acres. So, my farm is considered a small family farm. From Freddie. Hey, Bob. No further question. I want just make a shout out for your enormous lesson you're doing. I may your biggest dreams and wishes come true. Thank you very much, Freddie. I I I can tell I've been talking for a while because <laughs> my it's starting to get hard to talk. Volodymyr. Salam, dear teacher. It looks like you lost weight but it fits you. I wish you to be healthy and today you are so energetic. I think your wife is guilty. Perhaps Jen does like me to be healthy. So, she helps me to eat healthy. If you've watched my channel for a long time, you'll realize that I naturally look a little thinner and healthier in the summer and I tend to be less active in the winter and I think that's just the cycle of how I live. It's easier to exercise in the summer and I do a lot more physical work on the farm and it is also the time of year where we can buy a lot of fresh fruit and vegetables at market and so, I think I eat a little healthier. So, naturally, I'm always happy because at school, there's picture day and it's always in September and that's usually when I'm my healthiest, I look the healthiest. So, okay, let's finish this off. Um from Sean Bean. Hi, Bob. It's glad I'm glad to catch your live stream but I'm so sorry I had a gigantic yawn right now. Your video is very interesting just because I'm too tired from work today. Well, thanks for watching even though you are a little bit tired. So, hey, I think that's it. I think we're done all the questions. We have gone through the entire lesson. You can see the corner of my cup right here. I must be zoomed out a little more than normal. At least I'm not gigantic in the picture like I did when I zoomed in at the beginning. Um I'm gonna say bye to everybody. Thank you to the 346 people watching. If you're new here, don't forget to click that red subscribe button. Thanks to Dave for moderating the chat. Thanks to all of the regulars who were here, all of the members as well. Thanks to Brent from Speak English with this guy. Again, just a slight reveal. We would call it like a teaser. Brent and I have been chatting a little bit this week. Maybe planning something. Maybe not. Maybe just chatting. I don't know. Not gonna say any more than that. Who knows? Something might happen maybe or maybe something won't. Maybe we're just talking shop. In English, when you talk shop, it's when if you let like if you're an auto mechanic and you meet another auto mechanic when you're out at a party and you talk about fixing cars, you're talking shop. If Brent and I talk about teaching because we're both teachers, we would say that we are talking shop. Anyways, bye to Sita. Good to see you again. Freddie Wolf, Renata, uh, Abdikafi, uh, Key Park, Hafiez, 
John Wedge, Fabian, Vitor, Fabricio, Natalia Illusion. Hi, Natalia. Renata, Tafarel. Uh, I'm going to scroll the bottom by to Lolly Lolly and Jocelyn and Ivan, Irina. Good to see you, Irina. Key Park, Fink. Uh, thanks again, Dave. Bye to John Wedge, Madi, Mode Ags, Vitor, Elaine. Hi, Elaine. And Huawei Zhang and Eugene. Um, I don't know. My watch keeps buzzing. I don't know why. Maybe I should, maybe I shouldn't have put this on at the beginning. Bye again to Brent from Speak English with this guy. Trong, Pakosan, Wanda Prado, uh, Julie, Sereji, Omran, Terrace, Lillian. At some point, I have to stop saying bye. I can't. I can't do a live stream where I just say bye to people for 20 minutes at the end. Buy two new words with MP and thank you for gifting memberships each week. New words very much appreciated by me and the recipient. Uh, Daquan, William, Wilma. Okay, that's it. That's the end. Bye everyone. Have a good day. It was fun to do this. I'll see you uh new lesson Tuesday. I did a lesson at the park. I think you might like it. I did a lesson at the park at a park many years ago. So, this is kind of a refresher. Um, and then I'll see you next Friday with a live lesson and uh yeah, that should be fun. Bye everybody. You can watch me have a sip of water while I find the